right, so now we can go ahead and let's, um, you guys now, we can take it where you want to go. Okay, so you watch this last group. If you want to pick up with the question, why don't we, actually, why don't we start, if somebody wants to say what they thought, think that last group's question was, um, that might be an interesting thing just to put on the table. But then you can do whatever you want. You can raise your own question, you can talk about their question, you can go where you want to go. So, which one of you wants to begin? Yeah, go ahead, well, Eli, and then Joshi, mm -hmm. if um, you wanted to. I, I thought, like, um, I, well, with what I, the two things I really thought the painting is addressing is, um, like, the artist's eye, um, and also the artist's eye through history. Um, so, um, for the history part, um, my main evidence was what people talked about before with how the figures all look like they might be from different stages of art history. And then also that there's a mirror on the far left makes me think that, um, that might be a reference to the painting with the ballerinas and the mirror. Um, okay, wait, let's, let's make sure we understand where that is, uh, yes. Eli. On the far left, to our left, yeah. there's a mirror, you say? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's in, how do we know what's in the mirror? Or, or what, what, where, what's making you think there's a mirror? Let's um, put it that way. I, I think it's a mirror just, um, oh, well, now that I think of it, it might be a self-portrait, but I'm going to stick with the mirror idea because I think um, the way like the light bulb um, looks in it, and it, because we're seeing everything from the perspective of this artist, and um, the hand positioning is the same there. Um, so I'm imagining that that is the artist who's, who's um, we're seeing from their perspective. Okay, wait, we, let, let, let's hang on. So we're seeing everything from the, from the perspective of this artist in the foreground who has the thumbs, is yeah. that the artist? It's from that perspective that we're seeing everything? Yes. Okay. And from that perspective, from that artist's perspective, that we're, we're seeing a mirror on the left. Is that, that's that, let's say it's a, it's a person, right? Maybe it's mm. Nicole Eisenman. Maybe it's this artist, you know? Okay, so that's her perspective. And you're saying that she's showing us a mirror on the left. That's the mirror that she sees. Yes. That's it. That's what she sees. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and the mirror, and you know it's a mirror because there's a light bulb that's reflected in it. Yes. All right. So now, um, what's the say? Okay, I, I figured out. I understand what you're saying by that now. So what is your point now? What's your question? Or you, you said you agreed with this, that we had a, a history here mm. early. Um, well, the usage of the mirror reminds me of um, a, a painting, and I, I think it's by a Spanish painter, and it, um, I forget what it's called, but it has um, three ballerinas preparing before a show, and then um, that you can see, like, but it's all in a mirror, and you can okay. see the painter painting it, so I think that, that the mirror here might be a reference to that, because um, it's, I mean, it's a very popular piece from that era. Okay. And, um, all right, so the mirror is something that's, that's, that's part of the history. The use of a mirror is part of the history of art, I hear you say. Yeah, because that, that example also mm. has it. Okay, so you like the history interpreting. Okay, Lucy. Um, I guess, I think for me, the, the fact that the people are, um, they don't really look the same as one another, it, it was less about history for me and more about, like, um, maybe truth, kind of, like, it seems like the closer that they are to the subject, the more washed out they are and the less detail they have. So, like, the guy with the blue sleeves, he has, like, nothing on his face at all. Um, and then even the person holding the pad in the very front, like, their fingernails are super wonky. But then, like, the people in the back are pretty, that are, I guess, further away from the subject, seem pretty realistic. Um, and so I guess it's, it's kind of like they're all trying to render the truth of this subject, but maybe it's almost like truth is kind of like a light that's like too bright to stand, almost like that like light bulb, I guess, and um, that if you want your world to stay like predictable and normal, sort of like the way that the people have it in the back, then you can't get too close. And I think maybe the glass kind of also contributed to that feeling for me, because like there's so much glass in the picture, there's the mirror, there's the door that kind of looks like it's broken in the top left um, pane, and then there's also the window. And I guess glass 
has an interesting like double meaning because it can be used to like reflect and see yourself but it can also break and like hurt so I guess that's kind of I guess that'll contribute towards this like question about truth and like is truth a good thing or a bad thing okay so the question about truth and whether the or whether this artist is talking here not about human imperfection which is what we heard from the last group but whether the artist is talking about historical things that have happened, that was Eli's first idea, or your idea, is this artist telling us something about truth and the ability to observe the truth. And these people who are too close, the closer ones, do they have a harder time or an easier time observing the truth? I wasn't quite sure what you just said, Lucy. Mm -hmm. Like this one on the right, you know, with the, the qualms. Yeah. Um, I guess, well, I mean, my, my instinct would say that, like, oh, he's closer to the subject, so he's going to have an easier time drawing it, but it kind of looks like in this picture, it's like he's too close, and, like, his, close. his truths are being wiped out a right. little bit. Right. So it's hard to see, if you get too close to the subject, then it's really hard to see what is there. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that what we mean by truth? What is there? Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting um, idea. Okay, um, somebody else was trying to say something about what what they see in here. Um, oh yeah, please, please Sophie. Sophie. Yeah. Um, so I would also like to agree with Eli and say that um, it does look like there's a mirror mm -hmm. um, because you can kind of see the position of the drawing pencil with the per with the um, first person point of view is the same as that half person um, in the mirror. Okay, wait, let's stop right here, Sophie. This, you're saying that the ref there's a mirror and the reflection in the mirror is of this person in the foreground who's yes. holding the pencil. Yes. And that's what we're seeing in the mirror. Yes. So, all right, because to argue it's a mirror, we have to be, you, both you and Eli are looking for evidence that something's reflected. He saw the light bulb. You saw the, the pencil. pencil yeah. You see the pencil. Okay, so if you're right, and we have a mirror in this part of the painting, what's the purpose of putting a mirror in there that reflects things? Why would, what's the artist doing with that? I'm really not sure why it's there. Yeah, well, it's an interesting question. I mean, you could very well be right that that's a mirror. And we have a mirror reflection, and then the question becomes, well, why, what would we do that? Maybe that, I don't know. Why would, we, why would you put a mirror in there? Yeah, okay. Um, Soshi. Sure. Soshi. Yeah. Soshi. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that, um, I mean, a lot of times in our classes there are mirrors around, so you can do, like, self-portraits. Um, and... This sort of goes off of um, what Lucy was saying about how like close you are to things and how that like can affect the truth that you see. Um, because a lot of times when you go to like art museums, um, like you step back and you look at the whole picture. And so like maybe if you're looking at this painting and you're really far back, you might not see all the imperfections in the characters. Um, and that might be true also for if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're standing back, you might not see your imperfections, but the closer you get, um, you see more of the little imperfections everywhere and like you become really nitpicky about them. But it's also interesting that for the model, you see the imperfections right away. Um, you see the imperfections right away? Yeah. Well, what about what was said earlier that that Black, meaning the black blob, right? You see the imperfection right away. Okay, maybe that's the bullseye effect. But what, what about the idea that, that, I mean, I hear you and Lucy saying two different things. I hear Lucy, I heard, and tell me if it's wrong, I heard Lucy saying, if you get too close, it, the truth is, a, is dazzling. In a way. This is Plato, too, by the way. Okay? The truth is dazzling. You can't, you can't get too close to it. Otherwise, you can't see it. 
But what I heard Shoshi saying was, if you, if, unless you get close to it, well, you won't see it. Yeah, uh, yes, but um, the imperfections that you might see might not be the truth. Like, the truth, the truth is relative and like how you look at it. Um, like if you look at yourself in the mirror and you like get really close and look at all the imperfections, you start to get like this image of yourself that might not be the true image or the image that everyone else has around you, and that has to go with like self. Has to do with self. Okay, so what you're saying now, Shoshi, and this is an interesting distinction: you may see imperfections. You may get. You may not be get able to see imperfections unless you get closer. But seeing those imperfections doesn't necessarily mean you're seeing the truth. Yes. Not necessarily seeing what is. Just because you see imperfection, you don't necessarily see what is. Yeah. Which is an interesting idea. That the truth isn't, you know, the, see, we aren't necessarily imperfect. This artist is not necessarily presenting us with imperfection is a fact of human, the human condition. I mean, we've been, we've, several people have observed these imperfections in, in, these, in these various characters. Now, I want to tell you one fact. I didn't read a whole lot about this artist, but I did read one interview. And this is what the artist said. She said she herself is represented in the painting. She is the one. You want to guess which one she thinks she might? Would you, do you have any idea which one she might? Maybe, maybe the model? The model? The model. Yeah. Well, actually, she says she's the one with the lupine hands. The wolf-like hands. So the ones with the claws and the, you know, I mean, are those scratches? Uh, I, 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 when I first looked at this, I thought, well, maybe that's blood. The claws and the, and the, the, you know, the long nails, the, um, the scratches, and the fact that, to me, the guy sitting there on this chair may have blood on his face. I, I asked that question before, but that, some of you didn't see it. I don't know. But the point is that these, at least to some in the first group, looked like imperfections in these, these, these characters. And if this artist is saying, I'm the one with the lupine hands, I'm the one with the, you know, the claws and these imperfections, um, maybe the artist is, is, is showing something about herself. And that's, that takes us back to this question of what is it that this artist is saying about the human condition? As I see, as I see that as, as the point that we've begun to really wrestle with. And um, yeah, Eli, I think you were next, and then we'll go to the left. Um, well, I, what I think, like, if I um, had to say, like, what the artist was trying to show about the human condition with this, or like, what the, like, one one major point of it was, um, is like the artist perspective um, and because I think we really see it as um, the person in the foreground sees it um, so um, the one I, with the thumbs the one with the thumbs yeah. that's the one that shows us the artist perspective um, yeah, not the one not the one with the claws not the one with the claws um, because like it almost feels like he um, or if it's yeah I think it's a he um, copy and pasted um, what he has on the notepad onto there. Um, so I think that, um, or, and the outline is unclear because as you can see on the notepad, the outline is, uh, the outline isn't detailed or sharp. Um, and I think, I disagree with what people have said about the blob. I think that that's where his pencil is resting now. Um, and that mark is from just where he's holding his pencil, but if once he raises his pencil, it will be gone. Um, and, and then, the, the other thing wait, I wait, 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 wait. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I gotta follow this last one. The blob is where he's resting his pencil. So the person drawing in the foreground is drawing the blob. Um. Yes, or it's an it's an accidental mark that um, for just from keeping their pencil there too long. On the model, the blob on the model. Are you saying? 
Uh, um, yeah, well, I think that um, the, the person in the foreground doesn't see like them as a model. Like once they've drawn the initial outline, then they're really just Im like superimposing what they've drawn onto the, onto the figure that's standing there. Um, so now all of the, now what they see is their sketch and they're adding details until um, they can see them as the same thing. Okay. Shoshi, were you going to try to say what Eli was just saying? I was... You follow what he was just saying? Yeah. Okay, say, say what you think he was just saying. Um, I think he's saying, tell me if I'm wrong, that the model that we see in the painting isn't the model that everyone, all the characters see, it's just the model that the person at the foreground who's th with the thumb sees. Um, so like that model there is just the drawing and the perception of the character at the foreground. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I, th I think, oh, okay, we'll give you all a chance. I think, uh, uh, Lev, you were next, and then Maki, and then, um, tell me, Nina. Nina. And finally, uh, not Hannah. No. Okay. <laughs> Hannah was last. The other one. Yeah, the yeah. other Okay, go, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Lev. Okay. Um, so, the majority of the time I've been looking at this painting, I've been trying to figure out, like, what the model is in this room because everything everything around the model and everything in the room pretty much I find like really different and maybe not just like in styles of art because I don't really know much about styles of art I mean just in what they look like like you got the guy on the left who's orange and like square and blocky with his face and then the lupine hands person and the two semi green people in the back and the guy with the shrewd face. I think it's shrewd to me, at least. Um, and I was thinking... In the mirror? You, no, not on the On the, the left? On the, the guy next to the green people. Between the green yeah, people? Yeah, between the green people. Um, oh, in the middle, in the yeah. seated, in the group in the middle, in the back. Exactly. He's a seated um, guy in the red sweater. Yeah. So I was looking at all these people, and I, I was thinking, like, if there was no model there, I'd be really confused as to what was happening in the room, because everyone's so different, and and it's just really hard to figure out. And, and at first, I'm like, the model added to my confusion because it was even more different than everything else. It was like sort of abstract, very non-detailed. Um, but when I looked at it a little more, I figured, I, I, I thought to myself that like, the model sort of united everyone in the room. It, if the, the model sort of explained what was happening. Um, to me, because everyone, like like Eli said, is looking at this in their own way. Maybe the model is just like what's happening on that perspective person's paper, but everyone in the room is trying to look at this model and trying to analyze it in the best of their abilities. And maybe it's like all of them separate without this model. That's like a little bit that doesn't really. It's not unified. It's not like they don't have one purpose. They're also different. But when the model's there, it's like there's this unity and there's this explanation to why they're all trying to analyze and like group goal of like trying to put this thing on paper in the best of their abilities. Well that's the model adds unity to this. Yeah, it's because like a they're focal. all trying to draw the model. Yeah. And yeah, I guess so. That's what I was saying. Right, yeah. And and but what was saying, would you agree with the point that was made earlier, that what each one of these people that we can see, we can see three cases of what's being drawn, right? They see something different. Yeah, There's something like different on each one of these. It's all from a different angle. It's all from, like, a different perspective. They all look different. They all, you know, have their different places in the room to look at the model, so. And they, uh, so they have a different perspective, and they actually produce something different. So, okay. Slightly, at least. Slightly, all right. But they're all working towards, like, a group understanding, I think, even if they're all doing it on separate papers. A group understanding? A shared understanding? Are they trying to share with one another? Like, we're trying to come up with a shared question, right? The Maybe one that we all... Maybe they're having an interpretive discussion. What? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're having well, an interpretive Well, that's an interesting thing. Is it just isolated? These are different perspectives, and they're all looking at the same thing, but they see different things? I feel like what they're drawing though in the beginning like right now I think in this picture they're all drawing something that's personal to them on what they're seeing but I think as they work as they work 
more into this and draw more of the thing and work, I don't know, put more of it down and think more about it, I think they're all going to come to like the same kind of idea of what they're seeing. I think that's like the, what they're working towards and what the model does to the room. That's people. interesting. Okay. Who I one of you was next. I think Maki, we're next. Um I was thinking that instead of just having the model being what the um what we're seeing, since it's from the first it seems to be from the first person view, maybe it's everyone who's maybe um all these imperfections are aren't actually existing, but they're just from the person's standpoint. The different observers. Mm -hmm. There's these these. Okay, so the different observers have imperfections, or they each one sees imperfections. This is how the um, this is how the artist the, sees everyone else. This is how the artist sees everyone else. Okay, so this goes back to an idea that was given in the first group, too. That the artist, Nicole Eisenman, sees everyone as having imperfections. Um, yeah? More so of the, I was talking about the artist that we see things through in the painting. The, the pair of thumbs? The, yeah, the pair of thumbs. Okay, so that artist, and that artist sees the imperfections in those other characters? Yes. So that also goes back to an idea that that, 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 art, that we see, we, if we're like that artist with the thumbs, we see imperfections in one another. And is that, would you say, Maki, that that doesn't necessarily mean, this goes back to Shoshi's idea, that this doesn't necessarily mean that the truth is we're all imperfect. What it means is we see imperfections in one another. Yeah. So it's telling us about how we see things. We see this character as a character that has lupine hands. We see an imperfect character, an imperfect characteristic there. This is how we look at people. And is art, I mean, maybe I'm, I'll ask you now, I'm pushing this just a little bit further. Is art the representation or the expression of what we see something as? And is this artist saying we see human beings as imperfect and with different kinds of imperfections. So if you leave five minutes and I think Nina Right. Okay. okay. So, so is that what you were saying, Maki? Yeah. I'm just trying to say back to you what you were saying. Okay. Yes, then let's please go on. Um, I really loved what Eli was saying about the um, idea of the uh, artists like imposing their um, view of the subject, which is the model, um, onto like the actual like what they're seeing. So, like this whole time, I've been seeing it as the artist like shaping the model. Like the model starts as a blank slate, and whatever this artist puts down on the paper is what it ends up being, sort of thing. So, like we see from the pair of thumbs in the front that the um, pair of thumbs or the artist in the foreground has like drawn the face the way that we see the face on the model itself and there's there's like we don't know that the artist hasn't drawn that black blob on the center and we also don't know that they have but like I'm thinking that they they did draw that that black blob on the chest and like we're seeing what they've drawn like as what is in front of them so that one's presenting us with what's really there yeah, and, and I feel like if we were to see it from the perspective of one of the other artists in the room, we would see what they had drawn. So, would we see what was really there? What not was, necessarily, I don't not think. Not necessarily. So I think that it's um, artists, the artists that we're seeing are creating the what they're seeing, or they're creating the image or the meaning of what's actually in front of them, like on their own page. 
and so that's what we're seeing from their perspective. So that's what art is, mm -hmm. right? That's what I hear you saying. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what they do when yeah. they make art. They show us what they see. They see that creature there with the black blob mm -hmm. as something, mm -hmm. as having these characteristics. That's what we see. So we're really not talking about truth. We're talking about what they see. Yeah. You were going to say. Yeah, I was just going to say something that um, was interesting to me was that a lot of people said immediately they noticed the black blob. I didn't. That wasn't the first thing that my eyes were drawn to. Actually, there were three things. There was well, the first thing was the fact that they're all on different kinds of ground. The people more towards the center are on green wooden plank type things. Uh, I believe that that's a mirror, and he's on um, brown wooden planks, and the people in the back are on some kind of white cement ground. And I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's got to be some kind of like progression or uh, separation between the characters in the piece. And the other two things were the light bulb is on, but you can see in the back the, the window, and it's not dark outside. So that was one other kind of why is the light bulb why is the light bulb on? Does it need to be on? What does that mean? And then behind it you can see a person that's sort of sinking into the wall and next to it is like the only finished piece of art in the room. The rest of it is all just kind of started or uh, doodled or whatever you want to call it. But I thought it was really interesting that the person in the back, the, the piece of art doesn't seem to be hanging on any kind of wall. In fact, it's like blocking the person that is sort of sinking into the wall and like blending in with the wall. So it's almost as if that that person just finished their impression of the model in the center and now that they're done, they have no business being there. So they're sort of gone. And you can see that they've, they don't look, they look kind of satisfied with their hands, like job well done, but their face doesn't seem particularly happy. It seems kind of distressed. Now, now which ones are we talking about? That the ones in the very back, in the center? No, I'm talking the about the person that's sinking into the wall on the left. Okay, okay. that's in face. the mirror. No. No. no, not next to the mirror. Between the mirror and the new. Oh, oh it's mask. okay. The guy in the blue shirt. No, no the it's, one it's on the wall. It's the yeah. one in yeah. It's right there. Okay. Very now that's all right. Now that that's interesting. Okay. So so if you actually, I think you can see at least two. They could be masks on the wall. Yeah. I mean heads, heads. You were seeing the heads, and they were sinking into the wall. Right. Okay. So I think that would help. Would she, did she point out the right thing that you were talking about? Yes. Uh, I didn't actually. I didn't see the um, one on the bottom. It could be another. They could be masks, but I saw it as actually hands. I didn't see that as a mask. Uh, I saw it as a person kind of disappearing into the wall. Ah, uh, okay, so a head and those are the hands. Yeah, they're kind of disappearing into the wall, and maybe they have that person has created that the painting that's actually hanging on the wall. Right, and so that, that person disappears. disappears. Yeah, isn't that something? Now we haven't talked at all about that so-called finished painting on the wall. Right, and I mean it might also be. Uh, originally, you actually kind of sparked something. Originally, it was that since that they finished it, they had no business being there. But now it sort of makes me think that they don't exist anymore. It's actually their painting that they're seen by, not themselves. Okay, um, that's fascinating. I'm sorry that we are out of time. Um, you all did a great job. I can, can we just we're walking out of here. Um, I I brought a little treat for those of you who participated in this. We did did a wonderful job.